lighting tab. In order for the lighting and line of sight tab to function, those options must be toggled on in the play tab. From the Play tab, we can also switch on Player Vision Control, which will allow us as the GM to see the image as our players will. However, this is independent of any player-oriented visual techniques such as dark sight, lighting, and so on. Once we have all of these elements toggled on, we can switch back over to our lighting element and begin to add and adjust any of the lighting elements needed to further enhance our image. In the Lighting tab, we have several sub-tabs, such as the Select Light, the Add Light, Token Light, Token Vision, and Ambient Lighting. Ambient Lighting covers our entire map and is irrelevant to any sort of size that we have set. However, it is affected by masking. To set up our Ambient Light, we can simply turn on one of the presets which has several other effects attached to it. As one can see here, we have the ability to add shadows based off of our occluders. The lighting system and the line of sight system work in tandem. They are connected together. Each one can work independently. However, they do work off of each other. With a preset selected, we can see that immediately our ambient light color has been set, as well as it has been turned on the direction of our light and our shadows, as well as the length and color of our shadows, are now turned on as well. In addition, we have the ability to add and remove masks. What a mask does is it creates an area in which this lighting will not affect, thus creating a completely dark area. This is great for interiors and places where no ambient light should exist. Here we can create that effect by adding it inside of this element here. Inside of the barn, we will want to have no light from the outside or very little coming from certain areas. To control this, we simply need to add a mask. Once the mask has been added, we now have the ability to hide and reveal areas. With hide area selected, I am able to draw out a rectangle to remove that from the lighting system. By holding down Alt, I'm able to draw out any shape that I wish. If I hold down Shift, I will do the opposite as what, is what has been selected here. If Hide Area is selected and I hold Shift, I will now reveal an area. If I have a Reveal Area selected, and I hold shift, I will now hide the area. Mass areas are still affected by other light sources. It is just removed from the ambient light source area. Therefore, we can set up lighting in many different ways. I will click quickly add a mask to the interior. We may now adjust the length of our shadows that are now being cast by our line of sight occluders, as well as the color. Moving to the Add Light element. Placing a light now inside will again react with our mask system. In addition, it will interact with the line of sight occluders. Therefore, switching over to the Select Light, we're able to move the lighting around and see how it is going to be affected by 
and affect all of the elements that are inside of our massed area. Lighting elements have many factors that can be adjusted. All of this, again, is based off of how we have set up our grid system. Moving back to the grid, we can now see that we have set up 5 foot per square. And going into our lighting system, we can now see that everything is set up to be 20 feet, 40 feet. Moving this back over, we can adjust this to a... And that will be reflected inside of our lighting system. Changing this light to be 10 feet, we'll now adjust this so that it is two squares. From our center, we have bright light for two squares out and then dim light for 40 feet. Bringing this down to 20 feet, we can see that this will bring in the dim light area of our lighting to be four squares to total darkness from our original source. We can adjust the fall off, which is the gradient in between our elements. So from our bright light source, to our dim, and from our dim light source to total darkness. Setting this to zero will give us a very abrupt change, and setting it to 100 will give us a complete gra gradient from our original bright source to the dim area. Again, this will exactly work the same way in our dim light to darkness, giving us a complete gradient all the way from bright to dark. In addition to bright and dim distances and gradient fall off, we're also able to adjust its color. and opacity. Placed lights also have the ability to have behavior types such as flicker, pulse, and flash. The speed at which these occur can be adjusted by the slider to the right. In addition, we do have some presets, and these presets can also be changed in the Options panel. When clicking on the Options panel going to Token Lights, lighting presets are determined by the rule set and can be selected when placing a light. All lighting in Fantasy Grounds VTT is cumulative and additive. Thus, as lights pile on top of each other, areas will become brighter. Selecting a light after it's been placed and selecting a new preset will change that light to the new preset. All elements, once a light has been placed, can be changed after the fact. Lights can even be darkness. These elements can even be something along the lines of spells.
Again, all of these elements can be changed and adjusted. We also have token lights and token vision. In order for these to function, a token must be selected in order for them to add the existing features to a selected token. Most tokens sh should come onto the battlefield from the combat tracker. Although this is not always necessary, it is a good use case scenario and good practice to always use the combat tracker to make sure that all features are functional. Once an element has been added from the combat tracker, all functionality from inside of the lighting system for token vision and token lights is now accessible. By selecting the token, we are now able to see what the token sees. Moving this around in the play tab will allow us to see all of the elements as a player would. Back in the lighting tab, if we were to select something along the lines of token light, we can grab a, a preset such as a torch and add this to our existing token. Additionally, if we go into our options, token lights, our presets will be found here. We are able to add a new presets if we so wish. This will allow us to set its color, brightness, demo area, any sort of animation that might be attached to it, fall off the speed at which that effect will work, as well as any tags and durations. All other elements are also able to be edited here. Moving back into the play tab, once we have a torch added to our character, we may now move him on the inside. Here we can see that the lighting now affects from the token itself. Moving this token around inside of a dark area will allow us to use the lighting system and explore the area. Again, adding to any other light sources that may be in the area. We are also able to interact with occluders 